Keeping the parts and groups in a model organized is pivotal to working in Visualize. Grouping certain parts together for visibility changes or animating, as well as making sure the parts in the project are effectively broken up for applications of appearances, can make working with Visualize much easier. In Visualize, these organizational elements, along with settings for how the model will look in preview mode, are stored in the Models tab. In this lesson, I'll go over how to create groups, split parts, use the preview options, and for visualized professional users, add baked lighting to a project. Every tab in Visualize is made up of two areas, a selection area with all the related objects in the project, and the settings area where the settings for the tab or selected object can be found. In the model tab, the selection area is called the scene tree and acts as the organizer for the model. I can select the model from the tree to adjust its settings or click the arrow next to it to view all of its parts. To keep the scene tree organized, the parts can be put into groups. I'll make sure I'm in preview mode and that the purple group selection tool is active. I'll then scroll to the bottom of the scene tree and I can see that a few have already been created. I'll select the front left wheel group and notice that since I have the purple group selection tool active, the group became outlined in the viewport. I'll switch to the blue part selection tool, and the group in the scene tree expands to show the two parts in the group. If I need to break up this group into its parts, I can simply right click on the group name in the scene tree and select Ungroup Parts. Creating a new group is also a simple process. I'll click the headlight glass part in the viewport, and since I want to group this with the fog light glass, I'll hold down Control and either select it in the viewport or from the scene tree. Since this is an exterior part, using the viewport is simple, but for interior parts, selecting with the scene tree may be easier. I'll click Create a New Group, and the parts are moved to the bottom of the scene tree and placed in the group Part Group 1. I'll rename this group to Front Exterior and expand the palette so I can see more of the scene tree. I want to add the grill to the group, so I'll find it in the scene tree and simply drag and drop it into the group. Now when I enable the group selection tool and select one of those objects, all three are outlined in purple. Making groups is a great way to keep a project organized. But sometimes, a part will need to be broken up. Instead of making the change in the original CAD file and updating, I can instead use the Part Splitter tool to break up the part. To enable the Part Splitter, I'll make sure the blue Part Selection tool is enabled, right-click in the viewport on the part I want to split, and select Extract Part. This brings up the Part Splitting tool, which prompts me to left-click on a part to preview how it will split. For this model, I want the windshield to be separated from the rest of the glass, so I'll click it, and it immediately displays polygons marking the new part boundaries. If I need to change how much of the part was splitting, I can adjust the facet angle tolerance, similar to the magic wand tolerance in Photoshop. I'll reduce it to 1, and the selected area shrinks, and when I click anywhere else on the windshield, only a small section is selected. I want to make sure the entire windshield is split, however, so I'll increase the tolerance to 180 so the entire windshield is selected. I'll click Execute Split and close the part splitter. And now when I select the windshield, the outline only shows this piece of glass. I'll switch to the Appearance tab and apply a dark tinted glass to the side windows. Since the windshield is no longer a surface of that part, it doesn't update with the new appearance. With the organizational capabilities of the scene tree covered, I want to quickly touch on a few settings in preview mode accessible from the Models tab. I'll select the whole model from the top of the scene tree and look at the options. From the top options, I can hide, disable, fade, rotate, flip, change the pivot, or transform the model. 
I'll scroll down and expand the preview options. From here, I can enable floor shadows, show the wireframe, or if I had other models, I could toggle how they reflected on each other. If I select an individual part instead of the whole model and expand the preview options, I can control if that part has wireframe showing. The final setting I want to cover is baked lighting, which is only available in Visualize Professional. I'll first make sure my blue part selection tool is active, then shift select all the ungrouped parts in the scene tree and hold control to also select the front exterior group I created. Then scroll down and expand the baked lighting options. Before I enable it, I need to choose a vertex. Accurate uses the lighting of the environment and allows switching of environments, but does take a bit longer to initially bake the shadows. Approximate uses a generic environment to create the lighting effects and enable control over the shadow intensity. For most projects, Approximate is more than sufficient, so I'll select it, and the baked lighting is created onto the selected parts. A progress bar in the upper right lets me know how long it will take and allows me to cancel it as well. With the parts still selected, I'll toggle the baked lighting on and off. Notice how the interior and front fascia of the car gains shadow and depth when the baked lighting is enabled. Since this is a simulated effect, baked lighting won't be used in fast or accurate mode, but is extremely useful for adding realism to real-time presentations inside Visualize. As a final note, due to the way it's applied, I would always recommend setting it up only after all the part splitting has been completed.